What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today, well, we're back on the Trans Am and so we're continuing on with our series of fixes. Now, I need to wash this thing, but um, I got this part in and I wanna go ahead and replace that and that is the window motor. So, or not the window motor, the wiper motor. I don't know what I'm saying here. Okay, so these things, when you turn them on, they kinda come up from the park position, they call it, and then they start wiping. Well, then as you shut it off, they go back to this position and then eventually park. Well, as you can see, mine are turned off, the car's not running, and they will not go back into that park position, which is generally an issue with the motor. And so today, I'm going to replace the entire motor. I'm going to show you guys how I go about doing that. Um, I've actually never replaced one of these, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. So the very first thing is we need to pop this gross gross looking hood and take a look at kind of what we're going to have to remove so we've got a series of clips that you see uh, just pushing clips and you can see them there's random spots there that you know they're kind of mounted but um, before we do any of the clip removal um, we need to go ahead and take the wipers off and so we need to pull this guy and it's already snapped i noticed that um yeah see i lost the corner just then but it was already cracked uh, pretty common these are just pieces of plastic so we got to pull those off in order to get access to the bolt that holds this in place so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go grab i believe it's a 13 millimeter and we will see if we can get these off and uh, continue on with the progress uh, because what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to clean this area up as i'm doing this so i'm not just going to be replacing the motor but we're going to do some cleaning as well so let's go grab a 13 and get these loosened up. So they are indeed a 13. So we'll get these off here. And sometimes they like to stick. So just know that you may have an issue uh, getting them to pull off. Sometimes you gotta pry and Sometimes you have to, I leave the, the uh, nuts over here because sometimes you have to put them back on and give it a little tap in order to get them loose. Especially if they've been on here a long time like these have. So here's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna put this guy back on here. I'm gonna run it down almost all the way to where the threads are poking out. And I'm gonna get me a small hammer and just tap the top of this. Now you gotta be careful, obviously, don't hit your paint, but just give it a couple taps, then thread that back off. You don't wanna have your thread sticking through because you could mushroom out the top of it. And then generally, it will start to wiggle loose at that point. It's coming, but it's just taking its sweet time. And I may hit it a couple more times here. and try again I probably should grab some silicone and or some WD-40 and spray in there as well there it's coming it's coming now there we go so you can see it's spline and it just over time water gets in there and it starts to seize up so we'll get the other one off and then we'll work on this plastic now once we've got those off I'm gonna go ahead and grab, there should be three plastic clips and my clip removing tools. Don't like this area because it is small. I may have to use a different option here. That one I don't think is gonna happen. This one here maybe. I got that one out. But this one here is gonna be kind of a pain because the way it's placed. I might be able to get it here. There we go. So we have three of these, and then we can pop the hood and get the ones underneath. Once we have those out, we have one here in the corner, another one here, here, and there. So, oh, and there's one more over there. So one, two, three, four, five total. And uh, same situation, we're just gonna take the centers out of these 
And these have a little better access because they're not like countersunk in a hole. I guess they are a little bit, but not, not nearly as bad as the ones up above. So you just, if you pull the center out, and that one was, these have been out before, that's for sure. I may buy some replacements just to make this look a little nicer. And then I'm using a flathead, just a small flathead screwdriver to get the other piece out. So we'll get all five of those out, and then we should be loose. You can see it's starting to get loose. Now it is two piece. The center here kind of folds in, and you'll see when I go to take it off. Once we have all those out, it should start to get a little looser. So you can see how it separates there in the center. And then go ahead and start to pull it off all the way around. It's kind of an odd fitting thing. You're gonna kind of work your way around these edges over here that come up around the side of the glass because they kind of flip over so you can see we're out now. I say we're out, we're not, we're loose, let's put it that way. Now we'll come back over here in the center and see if we can drag it out. Generally, if you want, you can take out um, the, one of the struts. That makes life a little easier. Or you can kind of feed it up one way here as you're pulling out of the other. Oh, I forgot to unhook our wiper line. So there's a like a windshield squirter line in here that you need to unhook. I don't know if I'm going to have access to it here. Let's see if we can unhook it here. not wanting to come loose. There we go. Now we've got it unhooked. Just pulls off the back. Now maybe we can get this thing out. And guys look, set this thing somewhere on the ground where it um, is somewhat flat and the same shape that it was when you took it out. Now that we've got that out, now is a great time to vacuum. Check out all these leaves that are in here. I'm gonna grab my vacuum and uh, get all this vacuumed up all the way across. That is absolutely nasty. I didn't think this thing had ever set outside, but obviously at some point it has. And so we need to get that cleaned up, that is for sure. Now once we have it vacuumed out, I'm gonna reach back in there and unplug. You can see the plug there, it's got a little safety. So you'll pull that little red safety out and then you should just be able to push on that and get it unplugged. Then we can just kind of drag it out here out of the way for now. Once we have that unplugged, I kind of just strung it out here. I also took this off so you have a little more access to see that goes on top of this guy. But I'm gonna go ahead and take the 10 millimeter out that's up top here. And then there's another one you can see, you have to have a ratcheting wrench to get to it. But on the bottom side of this, this right here, you can see the head of it right here. But on the other side, there's a 10 millimeter. So we're going to take that out to get a little bit of this loose and see if we have a little more access. You can see that I have that loose now. Got the two tens out, the bolt on one side, the nut on the bottom of the other. I'm going to see if I can use my little separation tools to separate this joint right here. I don't know if they're strong enough. I may have to get um, something else, but I want to get, this just sets in a piece of plastic and I want to get this out of the way. There we go. It did work, but I didn't want to take this off because this is splined right here. And as far as for alignment purposes, I didn't want to risk that coming off. Um, this is just a ball and socket connection, so we can just push it back in once we get the new motor in place. But now we have quite a bit more access than what we had before, so you guys can see. Let's take a look in there and see what we've got. There's actually only one bolt that holds this thing in there, but in the very back back there, um, you have another one of those ball and sockets on the top of the motor that we have to make that connection 
and then there's a spring that you'll see on your new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this tin out that holds the motor in place, it's that bracket. The rest of it just actually slides into the back, into the firewall. So once we get this tin loose, we should have, we should have the ability to pull this forward and um, just try to be careful. Don't bend any of these aluminum braces or lines that run to like the middle. Uh, but let's go ahead and take this tin out and see what that gains us. You can see that we unbolted it, we pulled it forward, and it's gonna be hard for me to show you guys, but there's another one of those ball and socket connections right, right on top of that motor. So you can see it, maybe if I, I gotta find a way to put my light here where you guys can see. But if we move this arm, now you can see it back behind there. So we need to pop that off and you can drag it forward as far as you want uh, in order to get that out of place. But remember, this needs to go, this front one that we first disconnected needs to be on top of the motor. So just know that when we pull this all out, um, just make sure that you're getting the right one in the right place because they do look very, very similar. Um, but I'm gonna use that same set of pliers, pop that off and we should be able to drag this old motor out. So now we've got the old one out. Check it out. Holy cow, does it look bad. Uh, but you can see what I'm talking about, how these little plastic pieces, and I lost one coming out, but these little pieces here are the only way that it mounts inside the firewall. So this guy here, you can see I'm missing that one. I gotta grab it. Uh, but there's only that one 10 millimeter that we took out. But you can also see the ball and socket on top. And um, yeah, that's all we need to snap on. You can see we have our new assembly right beside our old one. Now, if you choose to, or you can't get these little rubber blocks out or plastic blocks, you could just take them off the other one and um, you know push the metal into it, but I was able to get them out. You can reach back in there and get them. But either way, um, I mean, pretty much an identical unit, guys. There's not a whole lot of difference here. Obviously, I'll list this one in the description down below. It is not a GM unit. I couldn't find a GM unit, so this is a uh, aftermarket company that makes them, hopefully, you know, it works when we put it in, everything looks the same. But other than that, I do wanna clean this area up, make sure that your spring hasn't moved. I noticed when I got this one out of the box, my spring was pushed down kind of like that. And you just wanna make sure that it's up here in parallel. And I really think, okay, this one has the same kind of tension. They don't have a ton of tension in that spring. I'm not even really sure what that does, if it helps it return or what, but either way, um, let's go over there and look at what area I wanna clean up before we put this all back together. Now I vacuumed all this out, but I want to get something to scrub all that dirt down there. Um, you know, you're just not gonna be able to vacuum that stuff that's stuck down. The other thing I want to do is I want to take, uh, go along the glass and clean all that up as well. And uh, that's just less that sticks and falls down in there afterwards. So I'm gonna go all the way across this cowl, probably just using some, you know, some, or power clean or super clean, uh, probably super clean since I have some of that out here. And um, you know, just giving this a good scrub. I don't, you don't have to get crazy, but in my opinion, guys, you've already got this apart. We're gonna clean under the hood at some point. This will just be one less area that we have to clean. So let's get uh, some towels, get the vacuum, vacuum it out, scrub it, vacuum it out again, maybe scrub it. It'll probably take two or three times, but either way, I'm, it's gonna get clean before we go back together. Well, at this point, I've went over it uh, several times with like a toothbrush and just a detailing brush. Got it all cleaned up. I'm, I didn't really show you guys this because I'm gonna show you when I do under the hood. So um, yeah, I just, just time consuming guys. Use a couple microfiber towels and uh, go over it two or three times, but I got it all cleaned up. Got the new unit here. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in place. Remember, we need that front arm on top and we also need that back arm on top. So you're just gonna have to wiggle it around in there, snake it back in there where these plug in the firewall like they did when the old unit and uh, then we'll get it all hooked up while we before we get it pushed all the way back though we do need to go ahead and set this guy in place which i will do and um, other than that it's pretty much going back the way we took it out we've got it back in place with the 10 millimeter on it you can see that i've got that front arm ready to hook up to that bracket but the back arm i hooked up while we were pushing that back uh, i did go ahead and clean this guy off so we're going to get it into place while we're doing that, we're going to obviously snap on that last arm and get this thing snug back down, and then we can worry about plugging it back in. We got that 10 millimeter stud tightened down back behind. We got that 10 millimeter um, tightened down here. Obviously, we snapped the arm on while we were going back, so all we need to do is plug this thing in, and um, you can see the plug back in here. Let's see if we can reach our hand back in there. 
There we go, and then we'll slide the little lock in place. Probably should have taken some time and cleaned that up, but. All right, locks in. So here's the deal, guys. I wanna clean off the rest of that, um, that plastic, right? And put some dressing on it because it's all faded. Looks pretty nasty, but I also wanna make sure that this works. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go grab at least one of my windshield wipers. I'm gonna set it in place. And then we're gonna try this. Um, I, you know, I, I just don't know any other way. I don't wanna put it all back together and then something not work, me have to rip it all back apart. And I wanna clean that other stuff, which I am gonna show you, but let's go at least grab a wiper, hook it up and see what happens. Now, I think it's safe to assume that this is in the down position when you get it. At least that's what I'm hoping. And uh, because of that, I'm gonna place this. I went ahead and put this black plastic piece on, obviously, that I took off. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hopefully you can down there. That guy. Clean that up a little bit. But I'm gonna set this thing on here, and then we're gonna kinda get it. You know, we don't really know where it goes right now. Honestly, all I'm looking for is, does it go to the park position? Which should be, you know, pretty far, pretty far down. Let's put this on here. We'll snug it down. I'm gonna take these off and paint them as well and replace the actual wipers. But we'll get this snug down. I'm gonna go grab the keys and let's at least see what happens. Now that we got that bolted on, let's give it a test. Because it should come on, just come up a little bit and then wipe and then go back down when I turn it off. Okay. Oh my gosh. Something's not right there, is it? That's wild. I don't know if this just didn't get seated all the way. Doesn't act like it may be seated. Like all the way down or something we'll try again we'll tighten it up a little tighter and make sure that we don't have any issues there oh the arm came off that could be the problem well that's not fun I wonder why that happened I wonder if I need a new bushing so that's still connecting to the same thing like it did before. Yeah, I bet I need a new bushing. It's not, it's not staying on there very well. I'm gonna have to order a new bushing, guys. That's great. It acts like it's dragging across something. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna have to work on it a little bit here. Well, let me tell you what I many times did uh, and do, and that is that I went inside and I started looking for bushings, right? And I'm like, well, I, I can't find anything. They do not make a replacement bushing for these. It's one of those trial and error things, I believe. They do make a new piece that goes to the center and then comes over here that has the bushings on it, but they do not make replacement bushings. So I'm like, man, I, I've got to figure this out. So I came back out here to see if they were cracked, took it all back apart. And you know what the problem was? I didn't get them seated all the way. Guys, you cannot push them together with your hands. You're gonna have to grab a pair of pliers and snap the two ends together. Now be very careful because they are aluminum, but that was my issue. They were coming out because they weren't completely hooked up. Uh, when I looked back in there after getting them pushed on, I noticed there was quite a bit showing between. I thought, man, that wasn't what it was before. 
that was what our issue was. So we're gonna try it again, and that makes sense because that that was probably why snap you on the tripod here. Uh, that was probably why we were getting that slight hesitation before it started wiping because that was slipping in that bushing. So we're gonna try it again, and it may not work, but we're gonna try. It's not going down very far. Not as far as I'd like it to anyway. See that? How it didn't go back down to like there? What's the deal with that? Hmm. I'm wondering if I don't have this tight enough. I just snugged it down, but I don't know guys, we may have to do some, some more hunting on this, but at least it's staying together now before it would swipe a couple times and then the, all that would come unloose uh, or pop out and underneath and was making terrible noise. I, I'm sure you guys heard it a minute ago, but either way, they are working. We may have to work on the park option. I don't know why exactly they wouldn't return back down I don't know what the deal is with that. That's interesting. We may have to get another motor or another module. I hope not. But we'll keep working on it either way. I just wanted to tell you guys that sometimes I go inside, I like sitting in the house and I'm thinking, why would this not work? And then I think of something, I come out here, mess with it, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys do that too. So you, you know, you're laying in bed in the middle of the night, you're like, you get an idea and sometimes i'll get out of bed put like get dressed and come out here and you know work so either way we're gonna keep going here and we'll just see if we can figure it out well <laughs> back to the drawing board guys i took that out i shipped it back um i it wasn't working and it wasn't it, it, it was working but it wasn't working well and so here's what I did. I got on eBay and found a low mileage replacement. So I normally don't like to use anything but GM parts. Obviously this car is old enough where it's discontinued so you can't order a new GM unit. Now randomly you might find one um, on a shelf somewhere. You might go to your local GM dealer but um, I'll put a link in eBay where I got mine. Um, it's a 50,000 mile unit. I'm hoping that it works. And um, the one thing I didn't like about the aftermarket one that I bought, and I'm going to list it down there as well so you guys see exactly what I bought and maybe don't, you know, I, I'm not trying, maybe, maybe I just got a bad one, maybe there's other ones, but I could grab the windshield wiper and move it manually. And while you can do that on a factory one, it's really tough. And so I thought at first, I thought, man, that is really weird. You shouldn't be able to do that. So either way, I'm going to go grab the replacement. We're going to put it back in just like we took the old one out and put the new one in. Um, so we're going to be doing this process again. I'm going to do that off camera, and then we will test it once I get it in and see if the new unit does the same thing. I'm really hoping, guys, that it doesn't because um, it's very frustrating to get this thing in there and get those things snapped on. You can see what I was talking about those uh, little pieces of plastic, they're really tough to snap on there. And like I said, you need to be careful because the rod is aluminum, and um, but you do need a pair of pliers to push those on. So while the motor's somewhat out, you can push them on. But either way, let's get it on there and give it another shot. At this point, I got it all back together. Um, here, here's what I'm talking about. Look at this. See how I can't, the other motor, I could just, this would pull up. This, I mean, I could force it if I wanted to, but it, yeah, something was up. Like I said, maybe I just got a bad one, guys, but all right, we're gonna give it a shot here. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's a little, I need to set it a little further down. But did you see it? See how it went back down? That's what we're wanting. So we got it, finally. That's exciting, it just sucks that, you know, that new motor didn't work, but hey, I, I don't care. 
if it's new or used, as long as it works. And so I figured a uh, pretty low mileage one, if you can find one. Heck, I've never, this is the first time, and I've owned probably over 100 F bodies in these years. So 98 to, actually 93 to 2002, I have replaced one of these motors. I've never had that issue. I've seen it, but I've never had it. So either way, I'm gonna take these things off. We're gonna go over there, we're gonna sand them down, make them look kind of nice again. They're, they're kind of, they need, they need to be repainted in my opinion. So we're gonna take this 13 back off, pop this thing out, and then we're gonna go over and do some cleaning on that trim. So that wiper cowl that sits here, I'm gonna kind of show you what product I'm gonna use. I'm gonna, uh, I've actually never tried it. I bought it a long time ago to do on some bumper caps and uh, haven't used it yet. So we're gonna give it a shot. So uh, we're gonna sand these down with probably some, I don't know, maybe four or five, 600 grit, get them roughed up. And um, I'm gonna shoot those with just some Rust-Oleum semi-gloss. I'm not gonna do a real glossy finish. I kind of want them an off, kind of like, I just don't want them shiny. So I'm gonna do that, but I will show you guys on the trim what I'm gonna be using and how I'm gonna do that. As far as this goes, there's pretty much gonna be three steps. I'm gonna start with some super clean and I'm just gonna get this thing, you know, some of the big stuff knocked off. I'm gonna be using a toothbrush here. And um, basically, I think what I'll do guys is I'll probably time-lapse the majority of this. Uh, when I get done with the front here, I'll probably flip it over and do one, at least one pass on the back. I mean, you're not gonna see that, but that's the kind of picky that I am. So once we, you know, get it kind of scrubbed down, we'll take, I've got kind of a dirty microfiber here that we will wipe it back with. And then we'll move on to the next step, which is that um, supplies I told you I bought to see how they worked. So I'll let you guys know. But anyway, let's, uh, let's start a time lapse here. Now that we've went over it that first time, it already looks a thousand times better, but now we're gonna use some trim cleaner from Chemical Guys. I've used this a couple times, but not like on anything this big to see, you know, it's supposed to take some of the oxidation off of these parts. And so we'll just have to see how, what I think about it as I'm using it, but I'm gonna go over this and um, I'm changing brushes. I changed to a, um, a little bit different brush to kind of get in some areas that I couldn't get. So we'll see how it works. And then once we finish, the, man, this stuff smells good. Um, once we finish this part, then we'll move on to the last step, which um, I actually, I'm gonna put a little more foam on the bottom. Some of the foam was peeling off. So I'm gonna do that as well while we've got this apart. I won't show you guys that. It's just the, it's all cracked and dry rotted, weathered. But either way, like these areas here, I couldn't get really well with the toothbrush. Same with these, like in the corners and whatnot. We'll see how this stuff works, what it looks like after it dries up. But let's time lapse this and then we'll move on.
I moved it off the floor because it was about to wreck me bending over and um, trying to clean that. It was just wearing me out. So I got it sitting on my son's old tires here. But um, it, to be honest, I don't know that I see a ton of difference between the super clean that I used and that. Uh, maybe it, it just looks like it dried it out a little more, to be honest with you, which is fine because we're going to put a coating on it. But at this point, let's go grab our coating and uh, take a look at what it is and then we'll uh, we'll finish this thing out hopefully. The stuff we're gonna be using here is from Chemical Guys also. It's tire and trim gel. And so, I, like I said, I've never used this guys. I've seen a lot of good results with it, but I don't know as far as, you know, how good it's gonna work for this application. It's kind of like a, a it, it is really like a gel. So we're just gonna kinda liberally apply this and I'll probably, if I had to guess, go over it a couple times and it smears on like snot. So what we'll do is we'll just try to hit every area here that we can and um, I'll probably let it set for a little bit. I didn't even read the instructions. Probably should have read the instructions, huh? I don't want this high gloss shine so I'm hoping that once we get it on here, we can knock some of that off by going over it maybe a couple times once it's, you know, kind of set on there. But I think I'll like the results from what I've seen in the, from other people anyway. It's definitely brightening it up. Let's finish this piece out. As you can see, I moved them once again, but um, anyway, they, you know, I, this is a second coat, guys, and I know it's really, really shiny, looks really greasy, and it is. Actually, I've actually wiped my hands off, but it is a mess. I will tell you, though, I did switch to the brush. You know, at first I was applying it with that microfiber down there, but I noticed if I put it on the end of the brush and then just kind of scrubbed it in, that makes it way easier to get in these sections that are a really, really a pain to get to. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna let this set overnight. There's two coats on this, and I really kind of probably overdid it, but I want this stuff to soak in. So I'm like I said, I'm gonna let it sit overnight, and then hopefully in the morning we can come back in here and uh, knock a lot of the sheen off. I think it's gonna look like a factory replacement piece. I don't think it's gonna have a ton of shine on it once we let it set and then knock it down. The other thing is in the morning, my wipers should be dry. I did paint them, they're hanging over there. Um, I painted them outside, but they're waiting or drying. So hopefully in the morning we can come out here and uh, get this all reassembled. After setting all night, this is what it looks like the next day. And look, it's way too shiny, I know. But uh, I think that a lot of that will probably have sucked in to that plastic that's been out in the elements for years and years. Probably never been dressed whatsoever. So at this point, I'm just gonna take this towel, it's a clean microfiber. I'm gonna just go over this, kind of buff it down, and I think we'll lose a lot of our shine. Now I think it's still gonna be shiny, and the cool thing about this stuff is it's supposed to repel water as well. The other thing I did was I took the time with my brush and went over all of the little plastic clips as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead, guys, knock the shine off this, get this all cleaned up or just wiped down. And then we're going to reinstall it with some new painted wipers that I've got over there as well as new wiper blades. And then I also have the new plastic caps that I was talking about. So I think it's going to look a lot better. But uh, let's get this knocked down and then over to the car. It's time, I've got the new foam on the bottom. If you guys can see that. That's actually just door seal foam. I'll list it in the description down below, but the old stuff was just all ratty and gross. So I figured we'd replace it since we had it off. So remember, we gotta kinda go up high on both sides and it kinda has to fold in half a little bit. It's just a mess. It's not the easiest thing to put in, in my opinion. I don't, I almost wonder if it would be easier to put it in kind of like this after I hit the camera. 
if we could go in, like from the bottom even. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I feel like we would have a little more room if we could go in like that. That's the way to do it. Of course, my phone piece came off. It's okay. So you need to make sure you plug in your windshield wiper fluid, because it came unplugged, remember? So I need to reach under there and do that, and then I'm gonna try to stick this little piece of foam back under, but yeah, we're pretty much set for the most part. I can get this plugged in down here. It's not like I'll ever use this, but I like stuff that makes sure that it works. Looks like it's fitting. Looks like everything went back in the way it was supposed to. We can just get it slid around where it needs to be and put the clips in. I think that's all we need to do. It clips somewhere over here on the glass, if I remember right. Oh, yeah. Kind of slides up in a channel. That looks good. Looks so much better. Everything fit like it's supposed to here. So all we need to do is go back through and put our plastic clip, our little push-in clips in, and uh, then go grab some wipers. Just look at how much cleaner that looks. It is absolutely incredible. So got my towel out here just to, you know, wipe up as we're going along. But guys, that looks great. So let's go grab us some windshield wipers. For the windshield wiper replacements, I just grabbed a set of Bosch, you know, the ones that kind of almost make a circle when you take them off the glass. And we've got our newly painted wiper arm. Now there are two different ones. The shorter one from the bend here to here is the driver's side. And all we need to do is hopefully, these are supposed to fit anyway, we just need to clip this on here. It's just a J-hook style. And that's it. It's clipped and snug. And then we need to set this thing in here, but we don't really know. We know that we want it as far down as possible. I think that's it. Oh, by the way, these are 24 inch wiper blades. And I think that's where I want it, right there. I mean, I want it almost touching. And we'll snug them down and obviously we'll test it before we get crazy as far as like putting, um, I say get crazy, I actually there's only just the clips here, but let's go grab the other one, get it on, and then snug these down and give it a try. These things have stops on them, you can see there and on the other side. So what I did was I just went shy of those stops. Now we may, uh, we may have them in the wrong position. We're just gonna have to see when we flip them on if they touch. I'm hoping they don't because I don't want them to scratch up and we um, have to repaint them. But we'll give it a try here and make sure that everything's working. And then we'll uh, go ahead and grab our caps, our new replacement caps that I'm excited about because those other ones, and I'll show you them back just actually side by side here in a second. Okay, let's give them a test. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now when we shut them off, what happens? Perfect. That's where I want them. They might be a little higher. No, they're about right where I placed them. That's perfect. Awesome. Okay, so let me go grab those caps and uh, we'll get those on. Now when I say caps, I'm talking about the little plastic covers that cover your bolt and uh or your your the nut that goes to keep those on and look they these are the old ones here and they're pretty prominent that they crack right here and you can see both of mine are cracked 
There are replacement options, and I'll list that in the description down below. I'm glad that they make replacement options because otherwise you'd be pretty much hosed as far as, um, you know, trying to find some of these that are good somewhere in a salvage yard. So either way, they just clip on. They are side specific. You should be able to hold it up and see the difference. At least I think you can. We're going to see if we can snap this one in. Generally, they go in here first like that and then swing down and should clip. Those did not make any kind of clipping noise. Oh, but they're on there. That one doesn't seem really tight to me. I may have to re-tighten that one. And then this other one, same situation. Put the top clip in first, swing it down. That one, you heard it clip. Definitely a lot nicer looking. At this point, we are completely finished. And I do have to say, guys, this thing looks like an F-body that's been setting in somebody's garage ever since new. That's how much better this looks now. This looks like a brand new piece. Now, time will tell whether it'll hold up. I think that it will. Um, because it didn't wipe off really easy. I think it kind of soaked in. Now, um, as far as the wipers, you know, I said I painted those with Rust-Oleum. Guys, the wind was blowing about 30 miles an hour, and I was still able to paint those, and they look really, really good. So I, I'm kind of surprised. I did use a semi-gloss. I'll link that in the description as well. Um, the new caps, uh, they're plastic, so it didn't hurt. Like, the towel that I used to wipe this, I used and kind of wiped over those to darken those up a little bit. But definitely um looking a lot better now that motor pulling that in and out was not the easiest thing but it's also not super time consuming there's not a lot there uh, if you just take your time take everything apart pull it out put the new one in and you know i had bad luck with that one that i used that i sent back and ended up getting that gm replacement but i can tell you guys that um you know i could have lifted that old one or that well the new the brand new one up right here with one finger and just pulled the wipers they were just that loose so maybe i got a bad one i don't know but either way this one's a fifty thousand mile replacement one i will put that search uh from ebay in the link down below as well if you guys are looking to replace one of these like i said i've had a bunch of these cars and never had to do this but um i'm kind of glad that i did because this gave me the time to clean up that cow like i wanted to so the next thing on this car um now that we've addressed well we've addressed a couple things the windshield wipers the top uh the power antenna I think the next thing on this car is I want to get it cleaned up. Now, let me know if you guys want to see me do that. I'm not talking about a crazy, like, buffing and stuff like that. But what I, I do want to do is get all the junk and road debris off of it, just the dirt. Um, there's some bugs on the front that really need to be taken off. Just a good cleanup. And the reason I don't want to buff it now is because we're going to clean under the hood here very soon. And when we do that... I'm going to be blowing stuff off on the side, so there's really no sense in trying to buff on it now. We'll have to rewash it once we get under the hood clean. So, uh, But the very next thing after that is I need to get my seats out and to my upholstery guy. I did order some replacement covers um, to fix both the side here. You can see how it's all worn, and then the rip in the other side. Now, the back seats are perfect, but um, yeah, I think we'll be doing that after we do the wash but let me know if you guys want to see me wash this thing down it'll probably be more like a time lapse video but yet again like i said another thing checked off the list they're not setting up which absolutely annoyed me they work perfect and we're getting there just little by little i love doing stuff like this it's kind of um therapeutic to me to clean stuff like that and um I like making stuff look new again. So either way, guys, if you did like this video, please like always go down there, smash that thumbs up button. If you are not subscribed, guys, please go down there, hit the subscribe button. Of course, ring the bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see this car clean up.